Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ishan Rahat Qureshi. I'm the founder and CEO of High Achievers League. So today I'll be answering a few questions that I've received from students regarding U.S. visa and particularly regarding the U.S. student visa. So let's start. The first question is, can I apply for student visa if my visit visa was refused? So you see, if your visit visa was refused, uh, the first thing to do is to see why it was refused. So there can be a number of reasons why your visa was refused. So we do help students and uh, people applying for the U.S. visa to improve their case. So the first thing that we do is to check uh, some of the reasons why the visa may have been refused. So even if your visa was re refused, I mean B1, B2, the visit visa was refused, you can still apply. You can apply for the visit visa and you can apply for the student visa as well. The good thing is that when you are applying for the student visa, uh, they are going to look at your case from a totally different angle. So this time the visa category is different from the last time, but uh, yes, they would be knowing that your visa would be refused and you should always be honest when filling the application, when answering the questions. So that's okay. Your visa was refused. There can be a number of reasons for that, but now you have got admission in a university. You are applying as a student. This is a fresh case. So they are definitely going to look at your uh, student visa from a different angle. So you don't need to worry about the what have happened previously and focus on your uh, student visa. Okay, another question is, can I apply for US student visa with family? <clears throat> yes, you can do that. So a number of people ask us this question. So if you, let's say you have got an admission in a university and you are now going to apply as a student and you are not taking your family. So in that case, you will be applying for the visa alone. And what you need to show to the visa officer is that you have got admission, legit admission in a legit institution, and you have the, the offer letter from them. And uh, the offer letter, when you apply in a US university, it's called an I-20. So the I-20 has all the basic information regarding the program where you got admission, the university where you got admission, and um, uh, the dates of the program and who will be paying for your tuition and your living expense, whether it would be you or whether it's a scholarship or whether it's a mix of both. So when uh, you apply for yourself, uh, this is something that you need to show. And if you're applying, for instance, uh, uh, if you're going as a self-funded student, then you'll be showing them the bank statement. If you're getting a scholarship, then you need to show them the scholarship letter. And it would also be mentioned on your I-20. But if you're applying with family, then even if you are fully funded, even then, uh, you will have to do one extra thing. You will have to show a bank statement showing that you guys have enough funds uh, for your family to live there in the U.S. for one year. So this is important. This is mandatory. The university is also going to ask those details and the visa officer uh, will also check those details. So I'm repeating it. If you're going, let's say, with your wife and um, and a child, or maybe uh, the wife got the admission and she's going with her spouse and two kids. So you have to show a bank statement depicting that you have enough funds for the first year. And then the visa officer may also, also ask you how you are going to fund yourself um, further in the coming years. So if you have got, um, uh, let's say you showed them a bank statement initially, but then you may also have some property that you plan to sell on. And then based on that, you, uh, you would be financing your family in US. So you can show that certainly if you have any property or any assets that you would be uh, selling. All right. So another question is, is it a good idea to apply with family for student visa or should I apply alone? So see, it depends. Um, so why does your family want to travel with you? It may happen that a lady got admission in a PhD program and she has a six month or a one year old baby. So who's going to look after the baby? So maybe, um, the husband is applying, you know, to support his wife and the kid. And that's what the husband is applying. It may be the case that there is no kid. But even then, the husband can apply because the husband and wife, um, they don't want to break their family setup. They want to be uh, together. So they are applying for, uh, you know, 
uh, for the so the spouse is also applying for visa. So this can be one reason. There can be a number of reasons. Uh, everyone's situation is unique. Everyone has um, uh, ha everyone has their own story. Uh, and as I mentioned, you should be honest regarding why you are applying and what are your future plans. How are you going to be financing? You're living in US, so all these things are important. So it really depends on whether the student should apply alone or should apply with the family. So when we look at the cases, we look at those cases uh, basically from person to person basis, and then we give the suggestions. Okay, another question. I've heard US student visa ratio is not good. Is that true? So you see, uh, there is a particular criteria that the visa officers go by in uh, deciding uh, to whom they should be giving the visas and to whom they would not be giving the visas. So the basic thing that they are looking for is that they don't want people, uh, they don't want uh, to give visas to those people whom they think would go to the US and then not come back. So they are looking for genuine students. They are looking for students who are going there to study and then they would like to come back. Yes, sometimes it does happen that plans change. Maybe you go there and after your studies, um, you get an opportunity to uh, uh, to start a job and live there. So that's a different case. But at the time when you're going, your intention should be clear that you are currently going as a student for your studies and um, you intend to come back after completing your studies. Okay, another question is, um, can I stay in the US after finishing my studies, even if I go as a student? So as I just mentioned, yes, you can, um, your intention should be to study and come back, but there is something called OPT or optional practical training. So this is uh, the work, kind of a work permit that you get um, after you finish your studies. So you actually apply for it in the last semester. And if you are in STEM education, then you, First of all, you get this OPT for one year and after one year, you can get it renewed for another two years. And if you are in a non-STEM program, then you get an OPT for one year. So within that one year or within those three years, you need to find a company that is willing to uh, sponsor your H-1B visa and uh, that is willing to hire you. So what is an H-1B visa? So after you have done your you have completed your studies on an F1 visa and you find a company that is willing to hire you and sponsor your H1B visa. So you need to get your visa status changed from F1 to H1B. H1B is a work visa in the US. But while you're on the OPT, you can still work in your field and try to find a job. Okay, so who is a good candidate for a US student visa? A genuine student having admission in a genuine recognized university or a program, a student who has taken the necessary uh, tests, whatever was required to apply. And uh, that uh, university is not a typical, a typical consultant university where students uh, run away, they don't come back. So the visa ratio of those universities would be bad, believe me. But uh, generally, what we do is uh, there are, you know, more than 4,700 universities in the U.S. So what we do is we shortlist uh, universities that are decent universities, ranked universities and universities that have that generally have good visa ratios. So this is very important. When we start a process with a student, we always keep this thing in mind that ultimately the student also would be applying for a visa. So we should be applying in schools and programs where the student should not be having issues with the visa, although no one can guarantee a visa, but uh, there are ways to improve your visa chances. And having admission in a good university, in a decent university, in a reasonable program is one of those reasons. All right, then another question is, how should I prepare for visa interview? So you see those students who are working with us officially, we do help them prepare for the visa interview. Uh, we conduct mock interviews as well. And we tell them the whole process, how to apply for the visa. What are the visa officers looking for? We not only help um, those students with uh, whom we help in admissions and then the visa process, but if you're applying for a B1, B2 visa, 
then in that case as well we uh, we help people uh, preparing for the visa interview so okay next question is what does it mean if my visa goes into administrative processing all right so there are three things that may happen generally uh, number one they may give you the visa number two they may reject your visa number three your visa may go into administrative processing so uh, this means that they need to further investigate your case and uh, they will probably keep your visa with them uh, they may keep your visa for one week for one month or even for six months or a year there there have been instances where people uh, got their uh, passports back um uh, i'm sorry uh, what i intended to mean was that they may uh, may uh, take your passport not your visa so they may take your passport and they may keep the passport with them for uh, a month or six months or even a year this has happened to people and in the end you may get the visa or you may not get the visa so if it goes in administrative processing it means they need to further investigate <clears throat> excuse me investigate your case and then if uh in case there is another scenario, uh, if your um, if there is an issue with your documents and document is missing, they may give you a green slip and they may ask you to just email them that missing document. So that means that most probably they have an intention to give you a visa, but you need to first provide them with the missing document. So generally, if you are getting the visa, they give you a blue slip. If you are not getting a visa, they give you a yellow slip. If it's going in administrative processing, they give you a white slip. And if um, they, some document is missing, they generally would give you a green slip. So, okay, so that takes care of that question. Okay, uh, next question is, can I stay in the U.S. after the end of my study? So I already answered that. Uh, there is this OPD uh, program where you can stay either for one year or for three years. And within those years or within that time, you would be looking for employment and a company that would be willing to sponsor you for a job. Uh, okay, last question is, is it true that it's easier to get US visa from Karachi than from Islamabad? Okay, this is a question that I get a lot. And there are students who especially try to take um, uh, the visa interview date in the Karachi consulate. So, I would basically say that it's more of a rumor than, than a fact. That's because I've seen many students or even many, you know, B1, B2 cases whose visas were um, declined, uh, even in Karachi. So don't worry about that. You know, if you have a genuine case, if you have nothing to hide, if you are truthful and mm -hmm. if you are determined, then go for whatever uh, consulate or embassy is closer to you. Don't worry about that. Just worry about the, the real thing. Uh, prepare for the interview. Uh, keep all your documents with you. And, you know, uh, students sometimes say that uh, sometimes they don't even ask for a single document. That's okay. That's, uh, you know, uh, their decision. But you should have all your documents ready with you. And you should go to the consulate that is closer to you or the embassy and uh, prepare for the visa well and take your visa interview. So with that, I hope I would have answered some questions. Um, if anyone has any other question, you can send me a WhatsApp message or an email. So with that, thank you so much and take care. Have a nice weekend.